Hi. Uh, so, today uh, we will be solving some uh, problem from uh, simple linear regression model that is the you know first topic uh, we uh, talked about and uh, here is uh, one problem from simple linear regression model. A study was made uh, on the effect of temperature on the yield of a chemical process. The following data were collected in a coded form. So, this is the x uh, stands for the temperature and uh, y is the yield of a chemical process. So, y is the response variable and x is a regressor variable and uh, we want to fit a simple linear regression model here. So, we are given 11 observations here. Okay. So, the first question is this is quite uh, straightforward. The first question is uh, assuming a model like you know y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon what are the least square estimates of the regression coefficient beta naught and uh, beta 1 and what is the fitted equation. Okay. Uh, we have solved uh, similar problems uh, in the while you know um, while we are talking about the simple linear regression model and then the second question is you know construct the ANOVA table and uh, test the hypothesis that you know beta 1 equal to 0 with uh, level of significance 0 0.05 and then what are the confidence limit for beta 1 and the fourth question is what are the confidence limit for the true mean value of uh, y when x equal to 3. Okay. Uh, let me start with the first one. So, we, we are given these observations uh, x i y i for i equal to 1 to 11 and first we will be fitting a uh, simple linear regression model using the least square technique. Okay. So, so, what we are given is that we are given x i and uh, y i for i equal to 1 to 11 and uh, <coughs> we want to fit a model like y equal to or y i equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i. Okay. So, we know that uh, this beta naught and beta 1 they are obtained by uh, minimizing the least square function that is uh, s which is equal to y i minus beta naught hat minus beta 1 hat x i. So, this is the ith residual and by uh, minimizing this one for i equal to 1 to 11, uh, we get uh, the least square estimate of uh, the regression coefficient beta naught and beta 1. So, beta 1 hat we know that this is equal to s x y please refer my uh, first topic simple linear regression. So, s x x. Okay. So, this can be also written as summation x i y i minus n x bar y bar. So, here n is equal to 11 by sum over 
x i square minus n x bar square. Okay. So, you are given x i y i for i equal to 1 to n. So, what you do is that best thing is that you compute sum over x i summation y i summation x i square summation y i square and also the product x i y i then you are done. Okay. Uh, so, you can you can compute all these things uh, for the given observations and then uh, you can check that this one is equal to 158 by 110 which is equal to 1.44. Okay. And beta naught hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar and you can check that this one is 1 not 2 by 11 that is 9.27. So, we are done with the first problem. So, the fitted equation is y i hat is equal to 9.27 plus 1.44 x i. So, this is the fitted model for the given problem. Okay. So, the next problem is uh, it says that construct the ANOVA table and then test the hypothesis that uh, h naught that beta 1 equal to 0 at uh, level of significance point 0 0.05. Okay. So, uh, now construct the ANOVA table. Okay, so source of variation degree of freedom sum of square m s resid m s and the f statistics. Okay, the source uh, total variation that is uh, uh, S S T. So, S S T is equal to summation y i minus y bar square i is from 1 to 11 and uh, you can check that this is equal to 248 point 18. Okay, so, the SS total is 248.18. Now, it has what is the degree of freedom? Degree of freedom is 10 because you know that uh, this y i minus y bar they satisfy a constraint like summation y i minus y bar is equal to 0. So, there is one constraint here. Uh, so, that is why uh, one degree of freedom less here. Now, you can compute uh, S s regression. S s regression is uh, beta 1 hat square s x x and we know that beta 1 hat is 158 by 110 square and s x x is 110 right. So, this is equal to 226.94. Well, so this is regression here and the S s regression is 226.94 and the degree of freedom here. See S s regression is also equal to uh, E i square from i equal to 1 to 11. So, this is another way to compute. You have the fitted model, uh, you know y i hat 
you have the original observation y i. So, you can compute e i for i is for i equal to 1 to 11, but uh, uh, you do not have the free, you do not have the freedom of choosing all the uh, e i's independently, because uh, because there are two constraints on on e i. So, uh, you can choose 9 residuals, I mean you have the freedom of choosing 9 residuals and remaining 2 have to be chosen in such a way that, uh, uh, that those 2 restrictions are satisfied. Okay. So, the degree of freedom for SS regression is equal to 9 and then the remaining part, the part which remain un unexplained, the part of variability that is SS residual okay, and that has degree of freedom 1 and uh, the SS is obtained by SS total minus SS regression that is uh, 22.23. Okay. And uh, the M s value is uh, sorry, I said the residual degree of freedom is 9, yeah. So, this is the residual degree of freedom, and the regression degree of freedom is equal to 1. Okay. So, the M s residual is S s residual by the degree of freedom that is 2.36 and the M s regression is S s regression by degree of freedom that is 226.94. So, the F statistics is uh, M s regression by M s residual. Uh, which is equal to 96.17. Now, you know that uh, we can test this hypothesis say H naught uh, that is uh, beta naught equal to 0 against uh, H 1 that beta 1 is not equal to 0 using this F statistics. and the observed value of f is equal to 96.17 and this has degree of freedom 19. So, you compute the you check uh, the tabulated value of f 0 0.05 1 9. So, that is equal to 5.12. So, f is the observed f is greater than the tabulated f. So, what the conclusion is that we, we reject uh, we reject h naught that is beta 1 is equal to 0 is uh, rejected. That means, there is a uh, linear uh, relationship between uh, between y and x. Okay. The next problem is uh, what are the confidence limit for beta 1. Okay. So, we have a point estimation for beta 1. Now, we will find the confidence limit for beta 1. Okay. So, before doing that uh, maybe uh, you know already, but uh, I want to say that another way to test this hypothesis that H naught beta 1 equal to 0 against H 1 beta 1 not equal to 0. This can be tested tested also using the T statistic that is T equal to beta 1 hat by M s residual by S x x. I hope you know all these things. So, this is the T statistic under the null hypothesis that 
beta 1 is equal to 0 and this follows t distribution with the degree of freedom n minus 2. So, here it is 9 and then you can check that this uh, t value is beta 1 hat is 1.44 and m s residual is 2.36 and s x x is 1 1 naught and you can check that this value is 9.83. Okay. And now, you look at the tabulated value of t that is t 0 5 degree of freedom 9 that is equal to 1.833. So, again the I mean of course, you will get the same result whether you uh, whether you use uh, uh, f statistic for testing the hypothesis or you use the t statistic for testing the hypothesis, you will the result will be the same. And uh, also, you know, uh, in fact, in e f is equal to t square under the null hypothesis. Okay. So, here uh, again the observed value is greater than the tabulated value. So, we reject uh, h naught that beta 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So, next uh, uh, we will go for the third problem. Uh, what are the confidence limit for beta 1 at uh, uh, 0 0.05 level of significance. Okay. So, for this one, uh, question is what are the confidence limits at alpha equal to 0 0.05 for beta 1. Okay. So, what we know is that we know uh, that uh, this beta 1 hat beta 1 hat which is a linear combination of y i s and y i s follow normal distribution. So, uh, linear combination of normal distribution is again normal. So, this follows normal distribution with parameter with mean beta 1 and variance sigma square is x x. Okay. So, I can write this one as again beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by sigma square by s x x this follows normal 0 1. Okay. But what happened is that this sigma square the population variance is usually unknown. So, we need to uh, estimate this one we estimate this one by m s residual and once you replace this sigma square by m s residual this follows uh, t distribution. So, beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by m s residual s x x this follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus 2. And from here uh, I can say that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by m s residual s x x this less than equal to t alpha by 2 n minus 2 and greater than t alpha by 2 n minus 2 degree of freedom of course, minus this has probability this has probability 1 minus alpha that is 0 0.95. And from here, we get uh, the 95 percent uh, confidence limit for, for beta 1. So, this can be written as, uh, so the beta 1 from here, beta 1 less than equal to 
beta 1 hat plus T alpha by 2 n minus 2 and of course, multiplied by this thing m s residual by s x x and here beta 1 hat minus t alpha by 2 degree of freedom n minus 2 m s residual by s x x again this has probability 1 minus alpha. Okay. So, that this is the so this is the lower limit for beta 1 and this is the upper limit for beta 1. Now, we know everything we know what is beta 1 hat we, we can find this tabulated value this is uh, T 0 0.025 because alpha is 0 0.05 and we know all these values. Okay. Uh, so, you can check that finally, this uh, beta 1 is. Uh, so, let me put beta 1 hat here. So, this is 1.44 and the T value is uh, 2.263 and the standard error of beta 1 hat is uh, 0 0.146. Okay and similarly here 1.44 minus 2.263 into 0.146 and here is the limit for beta 1 it is 1.77 and 1.11 okay so till now you know uh, these problems uh, we have already discussed uh, in the module i think even 4 also uh, it says that the fourth problem is that what are the confidence limit for the true mean value of y when x is equal to 3. Okay. So, what does this mean? We have to find the confidence limit for the true mean value that is mean of y or expected value of the response variable at x equal to 3. And in the first module or, or module or in uh, simple linear regression model, we denoted this one by expectation of y given x equal to 3. I mean uh, maybe we should not use this notation because x is not a random variable right. Uh, so, but both are same this is what I want to say here. Okay. So, we have to find the confidence interval for uh, this uh, mean value at x equal to 3. Well, so how to do that? So, what we want is that we want a confidence limit for E y at x equal to 3. Uh, okay. Well, so let me write uh, this thing instead of x 3, I will write that uh, we are looking for uh, say 95 percent confidence interval for mean value of y at say x equal to x naught. So, x naught is nothing but 3 that I will plug at the end. Okay. Uh, let me solve this in general for x naught. So, this is nothing but uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x naught. Right, because we considered the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus epsilon. So, the expected value of y at x naught is this one, because expectation of epsilon is equal to 0. And first what we will do is we will find an unbiased estimator for this one 
and unbiased estimator of this one uh, this at x equal to x naught that means the unbiased estimator of beta naught plus beta 1 x naught is nothing but beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught because beta naught hat is an unbiased estimator of beta naught and beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator of beta 1. Okay. So, uh, well, so this one, so the unbiased estimator beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught, this is a point estimator for the expected mean at x equal to x naught and we are looking for a confidence interval for this one. So, this follows normal distribution with mean beta naught plus beta 1 x naught and you can check that this has variance sigma square 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. Okay. Uh, so, uh, of course, then this minus the mean by square root of this follows normal 0 1 and if you replace this sigma square by m s residual then that follows t distribution. So, let me write that only. So, what I can do now that beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught minus the mean beta naught plus beta 1 x naught and we are looking for a confidence interval for this one. Uh, this by m s residual 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square is x x square root this follows t distribution with the degree of freedom n minus 2 right and from here you know now uh, yeah, and of course you know it so the whole thing uh, let me call it say a so a less than equal to t alpha by 2 n minus 2 minus t alpha by 2 n minus 2, this has probability 1 minus alpha, right? where a is nothing but this uh, variable. Okay. So, from here we will get a confidence interval for beta naught plus beta 1 x naught, which is the mean response at x at the point x equal to x naught. Okay. So, what we will get from there is that beta naught plus beta 1 x naught is less than beta naught plus beta 1 hat x naught plus t alpha by 2 in minus 2 and then the standard error of this one that is uh, m s residual 1 by n plus x naught minus x bar whole square s x x. And similarly here the same thing beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught minus this one that is t alpha by 2 n minus 2 which is quite uh, straightforward things okay m s residual 1 by n plus 
x naught minus x bar whole square by s x x. So, this will go here. Well, so you are done. So, you have to you know everything here, whatever you need, uh, and uh, finally, you can check that or should I put them. So, we know that this one is uh, this one is let me do for the uh, upper limit that is 9.27 this part and uh, then you know this is n equal to 11. So, it is 9 degree of freedom and alpha is 0 0.05. So, alpha by 2 is 0 0.025. So, that is 2.262 and uh, then you have here the MS residual is 2.36 and n is 1 n is 11 plus x naught is 3. Okay and x bar is 0 here. So, 3 by uh, okay, 3 square by s x x that is 1 1 0 right. So, this one is the upper bound for beta naught plus beta 1 x naught and you can check that this one is 9.27 plus okay, I think I said something wrong uh, 9.27 is beta naught only. So, plus beta 1 into x naught that is uh, beta 1 is 1.44 into x naught that is 3. So, this whole thing is uh, going to be equal to you can check that this is nothing but 15.03 is the upper limit beta 1 x naught and the lower limit you can check that is 12.15. Okay. So, uh, we found a confidence limit uh, for mean response at the point x equal to 3. Now, this might be little uh, you know we did not try this one before what it says is that what are the confidence limit at uh, point 0 0.05 level of significance for the difference between the true mean value of y when x 1 equal to 3. So, that is nothing but the mean value of y at x 1 equal to 3 and the mean value of y that is E y at say x 2 equal to minus 2. So, this problem says what is the difference between this not what what is the what are the confidence limit for this one. Okay. So, if I call this one say uh, z 1 and let me call this as z 2, what are the confidence limit for z 1 minus z 2. Okay. Now, just now we, we, we know now what is the unbiased estimator for this one. So, the unbiased estimator for z 1 for simplification, the unbiased estimator for z 1 is nothing but uh, beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x naught sorry here it is x 1. So, 3 and the unbiased estimator for z 2 call it z 2 hat that is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat minus 2 into minus 2. Okay. And uh, thus, 
the unbiased estimator for z1 minus z2 is z1 hat minus z2 hat which is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat 3 minus beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat minus 2 which is nothing but beta 1 hat into 5 and we know that beta 1 hat is equal to 1.44 into 5 which is equal to 7.20. Well, so what we did is that we found a point estimation for z 1 minus z 2 and the point estimation is 7.21. Now, we have to find the confidence interval for z 1 minus z 2. So, what we have to do is that we have to uh, find a distribution for you know, z 1 hat minus z 2 hat and uh, uh, for that we need to compute the variance of uh, uh, variance of z 1 hat minus z 2 hat is uh, nothing but variance of 5 beta 1 hat right because that is what we got here. So, z 1 hat minus z 2 hat is 5 beta 1 hat right. So, this one is nothing but 25 into variance of beta 1 hat right and uh, this is equal to 25 into sigma square by S x x which is equal to 25 sigma square by 1 1 0. Okay. So, z 1 hat minus z 2 hat which is an unbiased estimator for z 1 minus z 2 that follows normal distribution with mean z 1 minus z 2 and variance 25 sigma square by 1 u 10. And then again you know this minus this by square root of this follows standard normal and uh, if you replace this sigma square by ms residual then it is t distribution. So, z 1 minus z 2 minus z 1 minus z 2 by square root of 25 m s residual by 110 this follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus 2 right and from here i can write that z1 minus z2 is then uh, less than equal to z1 minus z1 hat minus z2 hat plus t alpha by 2 9 degree of freedom and here it is 25 into m s residual is uh, 2.36 and s x s x x is 1 on naught. Okay. And similarly here also it is z 1 hat minus z 2 hat minus t alpha by 2 9 degree of freedom by the same thing 25 into 2.36 by 1 1 naught. And finally, you know we know that this one is 7.2 naught right. So, finally, it is the confidence interval for z 1 minus z 2 is uh, 8.86 and the lower limit is 5.54. Okay. So, uh, this is how you know uh, we find the confidence interval for 
the mean difference at uh, two different points. Okay. Well, so the first problem was you know quite uh, easy, and uh, this sort of problem we already solved in the first module or in the first topic. Uh, now we'll go for the second problem, and uh, here. You know, I recommend you. You know, don't look at the solution first. You try uh, independently, and then you know if you can solve it independently. That means you know you have understood the things. Well, here is the problem. Uh, consider the simple linear regression model. Y equal to beta naught plus beta one x plus epsilon. Where the intercept is known. So, this is something new. So, for this linear model, the beta naught is already known. Okay. Then, what you have to do is that find the least square estimator of the slope beta 1 for this model. This is the first problem. Then, what is the variance of the slope? beta 1 hat for the least square estimator found in part 1. Okay. So, you find you, you find a least square estimator of beta 1 say that is beta 1 hat then find the variance of beta 1 hat. And the final problem is that it says that find the confidence interval for beta 1 and is this interval narrower than the estimator for the case where both slope and intercept are unknown. Okay. Uh, you try to solve uh, independently and uh, then see my solution and here is the solution. Uh, the first part is you are given a model y i, you have to fit this model beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i and epsilon i satisfy all this assumption uh, assume that normal 0 sigma square. The only thing is that here beta naught is known. Okay. So, only you have to find the least square estimator for beta 1 hat. Okay, so, how do we find that? Uh, we will compute the least square function s which is equal to uh, e i square. Okay. What is e i square? e i square is uh, uh, y i minus y i hat square which is equal to y i minus y i hat is beta naught minus beta 1 hat x i. So, see here I did not put hat because this is the parameter we do not need to estimate, we have to estimate only beta 1. And then this is the least square function and then you find beta 1 hat in such a way that this is minimum. Okay. So, we have to differentiate this least square function with respect to beta 1. This is equal to 0 implies that summation y i minus beta naught minus beta 1 hat x i into x i is equal to 0. And from here I get that y i minus beta naught into x i equal to beta 1 hat summation x i square. Okay. So, this implies that my least square estimator for beta 1 is equal to summation y i minus beta naught 
x i by summation x i square. Okay. So, this is the, so we are done with the first part, this is the least square estimator for beta 1 hat when beta naught is known. The second problem is you find the variance of beta 1 hat. Okay. The second part is you know, find the variance of beta 1 hat and uh, what is the beta 1 hat? Beta 1 hat we just found that this is equal to summation y i minus beta naught into x i by x i square. Right. Okay. So, the variance of this one. So, here only random variable is y i. Right. So, this one is equal to the variance of summation y i minus beta naught into x i variance of this by summation x i square whole square. Okay. So, this one is equal to uh, they are all independent y i is are independent. So, uh, this is x i square variance of y i right. Variance of y i minus beta naught is nothing but variance of y i because beta naught is a constant for i equal to 1 to n by summation x i square whole square and variance of y i we know that variance of y i is equal to sigma square. Right? So, we can put now the sigma square into x i square by summation x i square whole square. So, this is equal to sigma square by summation x i square yeah right. So, this is this is the variance of uh, beta 1 hat okay. and then the third problem was uh, you find a confidence interval for uh, for beta 1 hat. Okay. So, the last part was find a confidence interval for beta 1. Okay. Well, so we know the variance of beta 1 hat. Uh, let me check whether beta 1 hat is uh, unbiased. So, you find the expectation of beta 1 hat. So, that is nothing but expectation of summation y i minus beta naught x i sum over x i square and this one is equal to y y i minus beta naught is nothing but beta 1 x i right from the model you get into x i. So, you put the uh, expectation inside right by summation of x i square. Well, let me uh, make it clear. So, you can put uh, this expectation and uh, bring this expectation inside. So, y i minus beta naught y i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon right. So, expectation of y i minus beta naught is equal to expectation of beta 1 x i plus epsilon i and expectation of epsilon is, is equal to 0. So, it is expectation of beta 1 
x i which is beta 1 x i. Okay. Uh, so, this one is beta 1 into summation x i square by summation x i square that is nothing but beta 1. So, what we found is that expectation of beta 1 hat is equal to beta 1. So, the beta 1 hat is uh, unbiased right and we also know the variance of uh, variance of beta 1. Okay. So, beta 1 hat follows normal distribution with mean beta 1 and variance sigma square by summation x i square and then the usual technique uh, this minus this by square root of this follows standard normal and then beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by if you replace this sigma by m s residual by x i square, then what you get is that this follows t distribution with degree of freedom n minus 1 here. Okay. Uh, this is the residual degree of freedom and you should understand that here the model is y naught equal sorry y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x i plus epsilon i. So, y i is this and, and here while uh, minimizing this uh, least square function s which is equal to e i square there we differentiated this one with respect to beta 1 only. So, there is only one restriction on epsilon i and so you have the freedom of choosing n minus 1 e i independently and then the last one uh, has to be chosen in such a way that that restriction is satisfied. So, that is why the SS residual here has degree of freedom n minus 1 not n minus 2. So, this is one point uh, right and from here uh, you can check that we can write that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 by m s residual by summation x i square this less than equal to t alpha by 2 n minus 1 t alpha by 2 n minus 1 minus this has probability 1 minus alpha. Okay. And uh, then finally, what we have is that we have the interval for beta 1 that is beta 1 hat plus m s residual summation x i square t alpha by 2 n minus 1 and the lower bound is beta 1 hat minus m s residual by summation x i square t alpha by 2 n minus 1 this is the lower bound for this. Now, what happened in the usual case when both beta naught and beta 1 are unknown, we get this inter confidence interval for beta 1. There we get it is beta 1 hat plus m s residual by here you will get s x x into t alpha by 2 and the degree of freedom is n minus so, this is the upper limit and the lower limit is similar, similarly beta 1 hat minus m s residual by s x x into t alpha by 2 n minus 2. Now, the question was uh, is this interval 
narrower than the estimator for the case where both slope and intercept are unknown. So, this is the case when both uh, uh, intercept and beta 1 they are unknown and this is the case when uh, beta naught the intercept is known. Okay. Now, whether this interval is narrow than this one, uh, how to check that? See S x x is uh, equal to summation x i square minus n x bar square. So, which implies that S x x is smaller than summation x i square. That means, uh, this one is larger than this one is larger than this one. Okay. Uh, so, from here I can say that m s residual by summation x i square is less than equal to m s residual by s x x. So, this one is larger than this one and again from the t table you can check that you know uh, uh, t value for uh, for this one t alpha by 2 n minus 2 is larger than because the here the lower degree of freedom is larger than t alpha by sorry t alpha by 2 n minus 1. So, both this one is larger than this one, this one is larger than this one right. Okay, I should not write square root till that. So, that is why uh, of course, that this one this uh, interval is narrower than this one. The final answer is yes, uh, this interval is narrower than the interval for the case where both beta naught and beta 1, beta 1 and beta naught are unknown. Okay. So, uh, now uh, we have to stop. So, tomorrow again you know in the next class we will be ta talking about some more problems uh, on uh, regression. Thank you.